Hello everybody, it's your boy Master Energetic with another video and today I'm going to make a new series and in this series it's called Rank the Artist. Now in Rank the Artist, obviously, like you can tell in the title, we're going to rank the artist, but this time a little differently. We're going to be dissecting the layer of the artist, basically the lyrical content, projects and all that stuff, and the flow. So uh, yeah, for our first episode, our first artist is going to be Juice World. Today I was starting to like, you know, replay his music more and I think I can rank him more now in this series. So uh, yeah, let's get to our first aspect, which is the lyrics. Lay with me. Pop with me, get high with me if you're rock. All right, now for a lyrical part for Juice World. Definitely, if you're an avid uh, Juice World listener, if you was listening just to one or two songs for Juice World, you can definitely tell this man is obviously obsessed with rapping about drugs and perks and all that stuff. And Molly, it's definitely about how many bands he got. Like any other rapper, even though he doesn't talk necessarily, like he talks a lot about money, but not exaggerate like a bunch of rappers do he talks mostly about like drugs and all that stuff without how that helps like relieve his pain with his ex relationship struggles or whatever or his exes that were evil you know according to his book and all that stuff but uh, yeah he's obviously talks about you know depression just sadness and all that stuff and how his ex-girl just like, destroyed him by the same time he loves her all that stuff but uh yeah juice world definitely makes these lyrics more interesting actually like definitely you might think oh there's like this casual common topics so of like hip hop and all, but he definitely makes like when he combines these elements into a hook, he just makes it so fun and just so. Re I mean, he does repeat it a lot, but when that repetitiveness, he makes it like just like, it makes it like a catchy hook and like these lyrics and all. It, it's just like really good how he puts it all together. I mean, definitely these topics are like pretty dark, you know. But like, you know, songs like Lucid Dreams or All Girls Are the Same, you know, like Lucid Dreams, he just rants about, I mean, like the girl, like it broke his heart and all that stuff. And, and, and All Girls Are the Same, it's like, kind of like the same thing, talking about more about, you know, the girls and all, like, like the, a girl broke his heart and now he thinks that all girls are the same because of the experience he's had. Obviously not all girls are the same. He even explained it. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, definitely since his songs, like he's like Lean With Me, which is like, you know, talking about drugs or whatever. You know, it's like relieve the pain and all that stuff. But definitely in some songs, like just like he's talking about drugs a little bit too much, but at the same time, he makes it like a fun, like he just like makes it with, with like a fast beat or whatever. He makes it like really hyped. And like, I just like like when he like just turns the lyrics, like the lines and all that stuff and just makes it more hype and just, just, and just changes it. Like instead of being boring, just talking about like drugs and all whatever. Cause Juice World, he does talk about a lot of drugs, but at the same time, he makes him unique, you know. He just makes him like different, like very like like every other day. Talking about perks or whatever, he like makes like a line to fit it in there. But at the same time, having like this like unique just selection of things, I guess you could say. But definitely, I mean, I guess you could say in the lyrical content, he's not like the brightest, but he does make it sometimes fun. He makes a catchy hook with all the topics he made that are like pretty dark themes, but he just makes it just lit. Like you, you can just jam into. I mean, it's like the, as I was saying, like the darkest themes. He makes it like it just funny catchy but uh, yeah anyway let's go to the flow part which he's pretty surprising with the flows this is as far as it goes this the end of the road this the end of the road the other end of the road as i was saying with the flows he just has some really interesting and cool flows like i mean he makes them so unique and just so fun to sing with i mean when he's singing that's a good melodic type of you now singing is a little bit of auto-tune i mean this guy can really sing without auto-tune if he wanted to i mean there's some times where like if he goes like high in a pitch maybe he does need the auto-tune but as i was saying he can just sing without auto-tune if he wants to but anyway this isn't about auto-tune or not but anyway he's like definitely gifted when it comes to singing and all, I just like when he sings home at all, melodic and all, but just definitely when he just sings, he's really good. But uh, yeah, definitely his flows, I was saying like when he raps in old school hip hop drums, I remember there was a song, Death Race for Love, which there was like an old school like hip hop type of beat and he rapped over it and it just sounded so good. I, I just liked his flow and his rapping and all that stuff. And definitely like the generic, you know, juice for all, like when he's like rapping and like chill beats or whatever. I mean, definitely those flows can be like pretty, like th those flows can be like repetitive and at the same time good. I mean, you have to admit, it does get a little bit boring and repetitive when he's like mumbling or whatever. It kind of, it, it kind of like just feels like he's not trying <laughs> in that sense. But most of the time, he's doing pretty well. Just sometimes when he's like mumbling and all, it just definitely sounds like he just doesn't really want to be there. No offense. I mean, definitely in this, um, episode in this series i'm gonna be a little bit 
a little bit too more critical like the con like the pro and cons and all that stuff but yeah anyway continuing with the flows he definitely has another flow which is the xx sensation full destroyer flow i don't know why i call it full destroyer flow but this guy obviously a good example would be nuketown which this guy just goes full maniac mode you know screaming in the microphone doing like ear rape and all that stuff but like not ear rape but you guys get the point he goes full on saga he's got really mad he just wants to kill somebody but in nuketown definitely in his verse and scheme as his own god um song he definitely goes full on out like this energy that he brings you know with those 808s and all that stuff it just makes it so like hype like there's so much energy and so much aggression and power into that which is like impossible not to jam into just to jump and all that stuff like definitely i would play it in a party i mean juice world definitely when he goes in the aggression tone which i haven't heard in like when he did the new town thing it really surprised me and he handled it pretty well i mean death face for love he does go in like the you know aggression thing as well like with the you know hard just sort of beating and all that stuff and he starts rapping like screaming and sometimes like those songs weren't necessarily my favorite like i wish i could you know hear more like that nuketown chiba juice world when he was doing like that aggressive tone but anyway i mean those were my favorite tracks whatever see so he, he definitely has potential to do like an xx tentacion you know type of like tracks like in the future like he could definitely make a banger out of it just sometimes you need to like step a little bit back of the aggression because it can go a little bit too full like psycho and just kind of ruin it a bit <laughs> i'm sorry but i'm just being honest but uh, yeah, anyway, let's go to the next part. I'm in town, yeah. Party's going down. Yeah. Shoot them down. With a 50 rounds. For the final part of this episode, the final aspect, we're going to be ranking the albums, you know, from the chronological order from his first album to the final album. Now, uh, yes, um, his first album, which was 99, which is in SoundCloud. It's a short album. It's in, like an EP. I listened to it today. You know, it's like... It, it's a bland album like it's like there wasn't that much inspiration really to this album I feel like he wasn't really trying you know just like he was trying to make catchy hooks but he kind of felt like it just felt bland you know I just didn't like it that much I mean there was like probably two or three songs that I like like Moonlight, Lucid Dreams and some other songs I just can't remember that many songs from this album that were like necessarily memorable I like Moonlight because of its catchy hook you know it was a like, versatile I, I just liked his lines, you know. And these songs weren't really that memorable. They weren't that good. They just felt like they were boring, just bland. So if I were to rate this album, it would probably be like 5 out of 10. It was pretty mediocre. But uh, yeah, definitely. Um, let's go to our next album, which is Goodbye and Good Riddance, which is his first album to the mainstream. Now, definitely for a first album to the mainstream, he did pretty well. I, I really enjoyed this album. I mean, there's, there's definitely a story behind it, what he's like, talking about, you know, you know, his ex-girlfriend and all that stuff, which is like struggling and you know she leaves him or she cheats on him or something like that and then he's like sad depressed and he needs drugs or whatever to like basically recover from that pain and just you know in this album just basically you know keeps telling the story like like you know like, it, like she destroyed him and he just feels like just you know just his heart is broken like he you know saying like you ruined me or whatever and just and through this album you can definitely see like it changes like then he miss, starts to miss her like his new girlfriend is like an ex like he just doesn't have the same feelings to her and all that stuff and just it's a whole story you definitely get that from the beginning to the end it's a story i definitely enjoyed this more i felt there was like more meaning to listen to this album i just liked it more the sound was definitely better there's so much energy like so much power so much aggression when he was like rapping over it just singing over it with features little Uzi Vert, which i wasted which is definitely one of the bangers of this album i definitely like little Uzi's part and definitely juice world's part but yeah, there's definitely so many good tracks in here, which I really enjoyed. And I think you might enjoy it. If you like Juice World, you know, but I can really like this fast pace, you know, like this party, I guess I could say. I mean, what I call it this album is like, you can just listen to it if you're sad, if you're happy, or if you're just chill, really, you're definitely going to like it, enjoy this album. So I would definitely give it an 8 or a 9 out of 10, one of those. But uh, yeah, definitely let's go to the last album, his recent album, which is Death Raves for Love. Now, Death Raves for Love, listening to it over and over again, I've come to realize, like, it just, I like it not that much. <laughs> I mean, it's not his worst album. I think, you know, his first album was probably his worst album. I think Death Raves for Love was, like, a little bit too long. I mean, I don't think it was completely terrible, but there were some parts which 
I think some songs kept like repeating it, so the theme just got to repeat itself. I think like just felt kind of like all, some of these songs felt kind of like boring. I guess you could say bland. Some of them like just didn't feel like there was energy just put together. Just sometimes the lyrics could get a little bit ridiculous and obnoxious. I mean, Deuce Roll like had some good songs in the album. I guess you could say like Empty or The Beast Needs, where he did like a beat switch, and I just liked how he you know changed the beat and just raps differently, and just like from a fast pace, you know. To like a you know, smooth pace i just liked it you know i like those type of songs i mean there's definitely a lot of songs that were good in this album but there was definitely a lot of songs that are i guess the same more or less the same but yeah definitely if i were to rate that a 7 out of 10 at least a 7 out of 10. it wasn't the greatest but it wasn't you know bad Put my heart in the bag and nobody gets hurt now time for the score that I'm going to give Juice World. Juice World definitely deserves a 7 out of 10. You guys might think, well, one and an 8 or whatever. I just think Juice World is a good artist, but just not necessarily deserves the 8 out of 10. It just falls more on the average, you know, I guess catalog. I mean, he's definitely a good rapper, not gonna lie, but I think he could probably do better. I mean, good by Andrew Uden, as I was saying, was a good project. I definitely liked it. It was a solid project. He definitely has potential for the future. He could probably make as many hits as he wants. Like, I don't think it's gonna be a one-hit wonder. I don't think Deuce Dreams will probably be, like, the only hit. I mean, he definitely has Robbery and other songs that are definitely, like, good hits, like, you know, Hear Me Calling on stuff, but he definitely think that he's going in a good path. I think he's gonna be like, just have more projects that are gonna be pretty good. Hopefully better than Death Wish because I know he's making a new album this, um, because I think he announced it like in a few months, he's gonna publish like a new album. And I hopefully has like a good buy and good riddance, you know, type of sound mixed with like, like aggressive, you know, Juice Squirrel, Nuketown type of thing. Hopefully some of that rock star, you know, OG, um, a Juice World type of flow as well. And maybe some other parts. But uh, yeah, definitely thank you guys so much for watching. And also thank you guys so much for the support I received in the recent video with the Rich Brian to say the review, which that got 100 views in a day, which I'm just stunned, I'm just surprised. Thank you guys so much and I got six likes. And there's a comment down below that he was basically saying like love for indonesia like good review i subscribe and thank you we're now in 161 subscribers thank you guys so much you don't know how much that means to me that means the world to me thank you guys so much leaving the comments down below what you guys want to see me next which artists you want me to do a review on but uh, yeah definitely um please hit that like button down below leave a comment here debate you now i'm still like a little debate like what do you think about juice world do you think he's lit do you think he's trash do you think he's average like i said like, what do you personally think? And also just, you know, comment down below what are the things you disagree with. But yeah, as I was saying, leave a like, comment down below, share it with your friend, you know, share it with everybody you can. And uh, yeah, peace out, everybody, and ring the bell.